Que sabe? Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Foreign Correspondent Club uh, of Japan. <coughs> My name is Pio de Milia, and I'm moderating today this uh, press conference, this uh, Sayonara press conference from uh, the Russian ambassador in Tokyo, Mikhail Yurevich Galuzin. Uh, it is not the first time uh, that he accepted our invitation to speak at the club. Uh, we are already a little bit late, and uh, I'm sure that uh, being in association of professional journalists, we should uh, know what Ambassador Galuzin represents and what he's going to say. So I don't think he needs a special introduction. And I'd rather go straight into his uh, presentation and then uh, to the question and answer from the floor and online. Um, I believe uh, that our ambassador is leaving in a few days and uh, he's going back to Moscow, right? Yes. Not to another post. No. To another post, but in Moscow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, please uh, um, start with your speech. We are already 14 minutes late, so I believe that uh -huh. it's... Uh, please do, do it short. Be, 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 yes, so very, that very, we can uh, have a lot of questions. Uh, good evening, uh, good afternoon, dear Pio. Good afternoon, dear members of uh, the FCCG <laughs> Japan. Uh, first of all, I would like to apologize for being late a little bit because, uh, well, uh, in final days of my uh, of my tenure in Tokyo, I had uh, today uh, several events. So, uh, sorry for being late again. Uh, and thank you so much, dear Pio, dear friends, for this kind invitation uh, to speak uh, on the honorable floor of uh, the FCCG uh, and uh, to share with you my, my views, my thoughts, and of course, first, of, first and foremost, to answer your questions. Uh, so, uh, for me, as a diplomat, and a Japanologist, it was a great honor to be appointed uh, to the position of uh, the Russian ambassador uh, to Japan, where previously I spent three tenures as a diplomat of our embassy. Uh, I'm very proud of it, and, and I, I consider it a great honor, this trust which was showed to me by my uh, leadership. And uh, I, I, all these years in Japan, including the, uh, this uh, term as ambassador, I have been feeling great friendship, great warmth, uh, warmth and great sympathy uh, from my Japanese friends, whom I have here since my uh, student since my student times back in 1982 and 1883, uh, when I was studying in Soka University in the city of Hachioji near Tokyo. Uh, and uh, just today I met with the uh, friends who are uh, working in uh, Russian Japanese friendship societies, there are various societies of friendship with Russia here in Japan, and I felt again and again that uh, there is deep understanding and deep sympathy towards Russia, deep, uh, deeply rooted friendship uh, for uh, Russia here in Japanese society. Though maybe uh, reading uh, the, the, the mass media, uh, one can get a different uh, impression. Uh, so, uh, well, during my nearly five years in Tokyo, actually there was a very, very positive period uh, for uh, Russian-Japanese relations because uh, since 2018 to approximately 2020, 
the uh, thanks to uh, the uh, trust-based regular dialogue between President Putin and the then Prime Minister Shintaro Abe, uh, the Je Russian Japanese relations have made significant uh, progress in uh, many areas. And uh, this was uh, the period of uh, our uh, of, of development of our relations, which uh, fully responded to the interests of uh, the Russian and Japanese uh, sides, the Russian and Japanese peoples. And uh, uh, during this period, we have uh, we have uh, significantly deepened uh, our dialogue on political and security matters. Uh, we had. Uh, uh, re we have reached breakthrough achievements in the area of economic cooperation, including energy cooperation between our two countries. Uh, Russia again and again uh, uh, showed clearly that it is uh, a responsible supplier of strategically important uh, LNG, crude oil, and other uh, energy resources to Japan, and uh, that Russia does not use uh, energy as uh, a weaponry, uh, though it is used uh, economic uh, matters as a weaponry uh, by certain countries. Uh, <laughs> then uh, we had uh, really breakthrough achievements in uh, the area of cultural and humanitarian cooperation, including crossing years, cross years of Russia and Japan back in 2018 and 19. Uh, so, uh, in general, our relations, though there were, of course, certain differences in our approaches uh, to certain matters, uh, they were, uh, they've been developing in a very friendly, very good neighborly, very constructive and mutually beneficial uh, way. Uh, well, uh, unfortunately, uh, the uh, due to unfriendly actions uh, uh, from the Japanese uh, by the Japanese side, uh, after we uh, had to start uh, our special military operation in Ukraine back in February uh, this year, in full accord accordance with the UN Charter, using our right to self-defense. The unfriendly actions from the uh, Japanese side uh, unfortunately worsened our relations uh, uh, greatly, and now the, the future of our relations is uncertain. Uh, our stance is that uh, if uh, we uh, talk about, uh, let's say, improvement of our relations, the initiative should be uh, from the side that destroyed these relations. So uh, if and when the uh, Japanese side feels that it is uh, ready to present this or that initiative for improvement of our relations, we will we, we, we consider, we, we uh, proceed from the point that these initiatives should be delivered to us through diplomatic channels, and we will consider them. So, uh, that is what uh, I would like to tell you uh, as my starting remarks. Thank you very much for your kind attention. I'm ready to answer your questions, if there are any. And uh, once again, my apology, my apology for being late today. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ambassador. Okay, uh, let me just uh, start with the first question, uh, which I believe you expect from everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, today, uh, the American ambassador uh, sent out a, a tweet and an open letter mm -hmm. signed by, I believe, 40 or 42 ambassadors. Uh, do you have uh, any comment on that? And... Uh, Related to this, I noticed that the letter is signed uh, only by European and U.S. ambassador. Mm -hmm. uh, no, Amer no South American, no African, and no Asia. Uh, is there any uh, meaning on that? Mm -hmm. What is your reading of this? Is the world uh, so much divided on your position, or is just uh, that 
maybe the American embassy forgot about asking them. Mm. It's not the American embassy who forgot asking them. It's the United States, States of America who forgets uh, asking the other members of international community about anything. Uh, okay, pursuing their own egoistic policy. But uh, coming back to your uh, question, well, first of all, as I mentioned uh, in the very beginning, I had many, very many functions today, so I had no time to, to read uh, the, 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 the uh, letter you've just mentioned. And actually, I learned about its existence only when I arrived to the, uh, uh, to the FCCG. And I uh, had time only to read the very first, sentence. let's say, part or sentence. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That Russian ambassador said once said that Russia will not occupy Ukraine. Yes. Really, I, I said that we will not occupy Ukraine because it is the United States who occupies a part of Syria, ter Syrian territory, for instance. Uh, uh, it is uh, it is the United States that was occupying Iraq for many years, and without any uh, legal grounds to do so. It is the United States who not only just occupied Iraq, uh, but uh, it is the country that destroyed Iraq as a state and uh, made Iraq, uh, uh, and, and turned Iraq into a huge area where international terrorist activity started, uh, damaging and destabilizing the situation all over the world. What uh, we are doing in Ukraine, it's not an occupation, first of all. Uh, this is uh, our response, uh, using our right to self-defense, which is clearly stipulated in the UN Charter. It is our response to the uh, policy, to the hostile policy uh, of uh, the NATO countries headed by the United States. Uh, that, first of all, uh, encouraged uh, the criminal policy of Kyiv regime, who has conducted and is conducting uh, genocide policy against uh, Don the Donbas region, against the people of, uh, peoples of Donetsk and Lugansk uh, Democratic Republics. And uh, who uh, it, it is our response to the United States and, and other NATO members. Uh, who uh, turned Ukraine into an anti-Russian state, uh, which has and had and has hostile plans uh, of uh, uh, military invasion to Crimea, uh, a Russian territory. So uh, it is not an occupation. Uh, occupation, it is what the United States is doing uh, in many, many countries uh, uh, of the world, or has been or had done in, 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 in many countries uh, of the world. So, but uh, frankly, I, uh, I didn't expect, uh, I, I expected something like that. Uh, so it's not a surprise for me. And of course, uh, in no way it uh, may have, an, any, may have uh, any influence uh, on my activity uh, here in, uh, in Japan. Uh, well, uh, uh, and, well, uh, we have a lot of things to say about the uh, destructive policy of the United States in itself in Ukraine, for instance. Uh, it is about, uh, about uh, researches and exploration of uh, the components uh, of biological weapons in many, more than 30, uh, research facilities, so-called research facilities in Ukraine, uh, run by Pentagon, uh, and still we do not have any clear answer from the United States on whether they actually were on whether what on, on what uh, they they uh, were doing there. Though we uh, took up this issue in the UN Security Council for several times, uh, so. Uh, if anybody occupies, occupies now Ukraine, it is the United States and NATO who <coughs> actually rule Ukraine, who actually rule Kiev, the Kyiv regime, and who uh, encourage Kyiv regime for further, uh, for further meaningless uh, so-called fighting uh, against us. 
throwing the Ukrainian people uh, into more and more sufferings. Thank you so much. Ambassador, sorry. Let's keep aside the occupation of uh -huh. Ukraine. Mm -hmm. But it's true that now you are somehow disoccupying it, Carson? Are you leaving for, for good? Uh, uh, I think you have uh, read uh, the appeal. I think you have read the official statements of our military, and uh, that's what it is, actually. Uh, everything is clearly explained. Uh, right. We are withdrawing from Kherson to uh, well-established uh, lines, uh, military lines, and that is all. Uh, I would like to remind you uh, that uh, in in Kherson region, in uh, Zaporozhye region, and in Donetsk and Lugansk People's Republic, there were people's referendum, referendums about the future of these, of these <coughs> four regions, and the most majority of the participants, participants of these, uh, uh, of these uh, referendums voted uh, in favor of uh, being a part of uh, the Russian yes, but Federation. Ambassador, I'm sorry, but and, the that, UN that, 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 and, and, and that is that is what what is forever. Thank you. Okay, the UN uh, has uh, clearly stated what they think about uh, those but, referendum. Uh, Pio, sorry, I didn't uh, responded to your very very valuable remark about uh, those uh, about the number of countries who signed the uh -huh. called uh, the so-called letter. Yes, you are right. You are you are, you are quite right. The most majority of uh, the members of the international community joined uh, anti-Russian sanctions uh, imposed, uh, so-called anti-Russian sanctions imposed uh, by the Western states. Uh, and uh, this, uh, this, uh, and uh, of course, you will uh, tell me that, oh, well, there is a uh, UN General Assembly resolution condemning so-called Russia occupation, etc., Russia's occupation, etc., I will tell you quite frankly uh, that uh, the many, many and most majority of the uh, developing uh, nations were forced by the United States and their satellites to vote in favor. Uh, after this uh, vo so-called voting, uh, they shared with us uh, that they were threatened, they were blackmailed even, uh, by the United States diplomats uh, within the United Nations. So uh, the, the real value of this kind of voting is really very, very low. Thank you. Thank you. Anthony and then Isabel. Um, Anthony Rowley, I, I'm a columnist for the South China Morning Post and a contributor. Uh, Ambassador, um, I, uh, going back to the point made by my colleague, the moderator, mm -hmm. uh, frankly, I was astonished when I saw the statement signed by so many ambassadors. Um, yeah, this club here, we try to preserve uh, freedom of speech as, as far as we possibly can, including the speakers, of course. And yet that statement seemed to be, to me, to read as an attempt to preempt what you had to say before you'd even opened your mouth. And I wonder what you feel about the diplomatic protocol, if that's the right phrase, of, of an action like this. Have you seen an action like this before? Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I fully agree with you. Uh, well, uh, and again, uh, um, uh, I, I can only repeat what I... Uh, what I've uh, just mentioned, uh, the freedom of speech is, is uh, the, the, the basic, uh, basic, uh, basic component of the activity of the FCCG. And uh, if you are, if you do not agree with what I say, okay, please uh, express your opinion, maybe coming here, and uh, and uh, addressing you uh, directly again, it's 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 a part of the U.S. policy uh, of uh, trying uh, to uh, maliciously slander and uh, isolate Russia uh, in international affairs. And what Pio said, not myself, uh, uh, denies completely these attempts because uh, again, uh, only. Uh, a minority of the UN member countries 
have imposed any kind of so-called sanctions uh, towards Russia. The most majority uh, of countries are uh, maintaining and developing uh, friendly and uh, mutually beneficial uh, relations uh, with us, and uh, there is uh, no uh, isolation of uh, Russia uh, within the international community because we are cooperating with the majority of countries, and those who are imposing sanctions on us, in fact, are in isolation. Thank you. <coughs> Isabel, by the way, just a point of information. We will have, uh, I think, next week, also the American ambassador coming at the club, so okay. the equality uh, is maintained. My promise uh, not to preempt his uh, <laughs> uh, his statements uh, by, uh, by, by, by sending any letters uh, from Moscow. <laughs> um, uh, Isabel Reynolds from Bloomberg. Um, you mentioned just now that you think the US government forgets to consult the rest of the world, the, the um, South America, um, other parts of, mm -hmm. of the globe. Um, I was wondering, uh, the G20 summit is coming up soon. Um, mm -hmm. That is a broad forum that goes beyond just Europe and, and America. Mm -hmm. um, why isn't President Putin going to be there to make his case? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, uh, I think that uh, we <laughs> uh, explained clearly uh, uh, that uh, uh, this time uh, Mr. Sergei Lavrov, uh, Foreign Minister of Russia, will uh, represent Russia uh, in, uh, uh, at the uh, G20 summit. Uh, well, from time to time it happens. Uh, I recollect, for instance, how the American president once uh, missed, skipped, for instance, the APEC summit back in uh, 2013 in the uh, same country in Indonesia, in uh, Bali Island. Well, uh, there are some circumstances uh, that uh, may prevail in, uh, for, for this or this, for, for, for this or that uh, country. And by the way, I would like to remind you, I, I, as at that time I was ambassador to Jakarta, to Indonesia, and I, I had great honor to welcome uh, my president uh, in Bali during the APEC summit back in 2013. And I recollect how uh, during a discussion with the floor uh, at this APEC summit, it was, I think, if, if, if I'm not mistaken, it was the meeting between uh, President Putin and uh, the, the, the uh, business, uh, APEC Business Council, uh, APEC Business Advisory Council. And one of the participants uh, asked, asked my president, uh, what, do you, what, do you, what do you think about the absence of Mr. Obama? Maybe this uh, gentleman who asked this question expected that my president will uh, make any jokes about Mr. Obama, will criticize Mr. Obama. No. My president is a great politician, and he said that such kind of circumstances may occur to any leader of the country, and that he uh, wishes Mr. Obama to, to, to overcome the difficulties he was facing that time. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> Ambassador Kado Ujin. I'm Kanehira from Tokyo Broadcasting System. Uh, Ambassador Galujin, uh, I actually uh, the feel regretful mm? to hear regretful mm -hmm. uh, to hear you leave uh, Japan, and uh, I <laughs> I know that you you speak Japanese perfectly, uh, much much better than Japanese. And <laughs> much better than English, definitely, but <laughs> <laughs> not much better than Japanese. And I, okay. I know. Can, can you please have the question, please? Okay. I know. Uh, you try to improve the, the bilateral relationship between two countries. Yeah. And uh, tell us the, what is the uh, most difficult task during your uh, 
term as an ambassador in these five years? What is your most difficult task? Mm -hmm. And second question. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have uh, any information about your successor. Uh, no ambassador was uh, appointed so far uh, by your government. Uh, do you have any uh, comment on that uh, situation? OK. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Konehira. Uh, well, uh, first of all, uh, as I mentioned in the very beginning, uh, the, the first part, or maybe the most part of my tenure here, uh, was uh, the period of uh, successful development of the Russian-Japanese relations. Uh, we were cooperating with our Japanese colleagues uh, for promotion, political dialogue, and security dialogue between our security issues dialogue between our countries. We, we were working together to uh, uh, push forward our mutually beneficial economic cooperation, including, including strategic area of energy. We were uh, developing our cultural and, uh, and, 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 and humanitarian exchange. Uh, so, uh, and frankly, speaking about that very period, I don't see any, let's say, dramatic difficulty that I uh, would, had, would have to overcome. Uh, or that I uh, would have to address. But during the final, let's say, year or final nine months of my uh, mission here, yes, uh, of course, uh, my, one of my main tasks was to uh, explain to the Japanese public opinion uh, the uh, real background, real reasons, and uh, real purposes of uh, our uh, special military operation in Ukraine, because, uh, again, uh, reading the, uh, listening to the Western countries' officials and uh, reading uh, the Western countries' media, uh, one uh, may uh, get a uh, very, very much distorted uh, impression uh, of our policy. And to uh, explain the truth, to explain the real picture of our policy was uh, and is one of my main tasks here. Thank you. Andy? Um, good afternoon, Ambassador. Andy Sharp from Nikkei Asia. Um, so this special military operation instigated by Vladimir Putin has been estimated to have claimed up to 200,000 lives, the US estimate. 100,000 on the Russian side, 100,000 on the Ukraine side. I'm sure there are various figures. We, we don't know the true cost of this. But clearly, there's a lot of bloodshed. Economically, the world is bleeding right now. The war has, per sorry, the special military operation or the war, depends how you define it, has pushed up global commodity prices hugely, triggered uh, global inflation, potentially pushing the, glo the world into recession. Even the Russian economy is expected, forecasted by the IMF, to contra contract 7.6% this year. So this operation or war is not only hurting the lives of people across the world, it's also hurts the lives of the Russian people. When is Vladimir Putin going to pull a plug on this madness? Well, it seems to me that it will take time to lecture you personally, maybe, uh, about, uh, uh, about uh, the real uh, background uh, of what is happening now in Ukraine. You, and uh, this is very much common for uh, many journalists, unfortunately, in the West, you uh, are artificially making the starting point uh, at the uh, 24th of February this year. It's not objective. It's not true, actually. Uh, because uh, the bloodshed and destruction 
of, for instance, Ukrainian population started in February, but of the year 2014, when uh, the, the, the United States and other, other NATO countries sponsored and masterminded and supported uh, armed coup d'etat in Kyiv, which hosted the uh, legal leadership, lawful leadership of that time Ukraine, and uh, put on the top of the power uh, the Nazis forces that started genocide policy towards those in Ukraine who would not accept, who did not accept this illegal regime change in Kyiv. So bloodshed started that time, and madness started that time. Uh, and during this eight-year genocide war of the Kyiv regime against its that time compatriots uh, or people whom they first call, call, called compatriots but then they are starting insulting them, uh, calling them in a very, very uh, unpro improper way, uh, which I don't want to quote. Uh, so uh, this genocide, if we speak only about, uh, if we speak only about peaceful civilians, including children, took lives of more than 3,000 people. Do you know that there is an angel alley in Donetsk? Alley, which is the monument to the children who died from the Ukrainian artillery, Ukrainian air bombardments, etc. So, you said that the, wor the world was bleeding because the world economy is now in, in a very, very uh, bad shape. I would agree with you. It's true. But let's recall when this bleeding started. Did it start on the 24th of February 2022? <coughs> no. It started much, much earlier. The The... Prices on energy resources and the prices on food started plummeting two, three years before our special military operation due to irresponsible policy of the Western countries who, first of all, were so active in pursuing so-called green agenda that uh, they reduced or limited investments in uh, further exploration and research of fossil oils, which pushed the prices very high. The same may, may be said about the food prices. Uh, uh, the Western countries fueled their economies with liquidity, without any uh, limitations during the corona crisis. So, uh, using this liquidity, the, using this money, they just uh, bought a lot of foods, food stuff, a lot of pro food products in the uh, developing world that again pushed prices higher. They, uh, as I mentioned above, uh, the lack of investments to fossil oil, uh, fossil fuel research f uh, resources. Uh, made it uh, uh, limited or reduced the production of fertilizers. Some of them, for, to, to product some of them, gas is needed, natural gas is needed, for instance. So that is what led finally to uh, the uh, world crisis. And then the uh, so-called sanctions imposed on Russia after uh, February, uh, uh, 24th of uh, February, 2022, these sanctions led to destruction of uh, traditional supply chain. They led to uh, unlawful, illegal 
uh, illegal pre uh, bans on uh, Russian ships border uh, visits to the uh, European and uh, American ports. So uh, this is what uh, pushed the world prices higher. Yes, uh, we of course uh, we are part of the we are a part of the world economy. No matter how hardly the United States and its uh, satellites are imposing uh, sanctions on us, uh, and of course we uh, also uh, feel the influence of uh, these uh, economic difficulties. But but also the uh, eco economists and uh, population of the countries who imposed these sanctions on us are also feeling uh, feeling uh, very very heavy difficulties uh, due to the policy of uh, their own governments who are trying to isolate Russia uh, using economy as a weaponry. Uh, and uh, we see now on th in the streets of uh, many European cities uh, the mass protests against such policy. Thank you so much. Um, I think Yes. So this year, hi. Uh, hello, Mr. Ambassador. Uh, my name is Andriy Nazarenko. I am from Eastern Ukraine, Kharkiv, and I am Russian speaking, by the way. So I have a question. Eastern Ukraine, sorry. Eastern Ukraine, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Eastern Ukraine. Kharkiv. 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 Kharkiv yes. yes, and I have a question about the Russian political system. You know, I understand Russian, and lately I've been seeing a lot of news about the private military company called Wagner. Uh, its founder, Mr. Prigozhin, promises criminals in prison that they would be pardoned if they go to the war against Ukraine. Uh, regarding elections in USA, he says in name of Russia that we intervened in the American elections, are intervening, and will continue to do so. But amnesty is the prerogative of the president, and foreign policy is a prerogative of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, isn't it? So I have a question in that regard. If a person who is nothing more than director of one private military company can send his mercenaries to the war in Ukraine instead of regular army, if he, if he can control foreign and internal policies of Russia, can you really say that Russia is a country led by law? Uh, Mr. Ambassador did a lot of efforts to deepen uh, relations between Rus Russia and Japan, but I think that respecting internal and international laws and keeping promises is the main precondition for international cooperation. So now, seeing moves in Russia, which are suspected to be against not only international law, but Russia's own constitution, a lot of Japanese companies are worried, is Russia really uh, ruled by law or by some people in power? So please clarify about that. Is Russia really ruled by law? Thank you. Well, uh, it was uh, rather a lecture than a question, but, 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 but okay. Uh, of course, Russia is ruled by law. And it is, uh, in according to the Constitution, it is the president of Russia who uh, determines uh, the main direct directions of its uh, uh, domestic and uh, foreign policy. Uh, no doubt about this. Uh, then, uh, if we talk about uh, what you called uh, private uh, private uh, company, uh, private military company, this very company is also uh, conducting its activity in accordance uh, with uh, the uh, domestic law of Russia. And, well, I don't think you will agree with me, but uh, uh, I think it's, uh, it makes a great, great difference uh, between uh, uh, those uh, soldiers who are uh, members of this uh, company uh, and uh, uh, the uh, foreign mercenaries who are uh, criminals who are fighting on the side of the uh, Ukrainian uh, forces and uh, who are con uh, c conducting, uh, who are committing uh, crimes together with the Ukrainian armed forces and uh, Ukrainian Nazi battalions like Azov uh, and uh, others. 
We saw these guys when we uh, took them as uh, prisoners. They are uh, covered with Nazi symbols uh, from their from their legs uh, to, to, to their heads, and uh, uh, it, uh, it, it makes great difference uh, between uh, uh, the uh, uh, soldiers uh, of private company acting in, in, in accordance with the Russian law and uh, those uh, so-called soldiers of fortune who are coming uh, to Ukraine, in many cases illegally, uh, just uh, remember I, I, I just want to recall that not far than yesterday, uh, the Japanese government official again warned the Japanese nationals uh, not to go to Ukraine because there wasn't mass media uh, information uh, that uh, a Japanese national died uh, when he was <laughs> fighting. Uh, within the uh, Ukrainian, uh, within the uh, Ukrainian units, uh, so uh, Russia is uh, about law, and uh, the, uh, that is why uh, we uh, we f explained very in a very clear manner uh, the uh, legal grounds of uh, our special military operation. In Ukraine, I have, have mentioned about this. Uh, I, I, I've just mentioned about this uh, in the very beginning, so uh, I won't. Uh, I won't uh, repeat it. And uh, uh, if you talk about uh, the the the, the uh, some uh, expressions, some statements, some remarks of uh, this or that person in Russia. Uh, about uh, what, what what they call what you call interference uh, with the American uh, domestic affairs. So uh, Russia is a free country, and uh, there is a free of speech. So uh, a any person uh, any person can uh, speak what it actually thinks, and uh, uh, there is I don't think uh, I don't think it's a, a great problem. And uh, if you uh, mentioned this uh, topic of interference. Uh, let's recall what uh, uh, happened in your country back in February 2014, when uh, not just uh, this or that uh, private person uh, <laughs> uh, said this or that, uh, expressed this or that uh, remarks. Uh, I remember very clearly, I saw it on TV screen, when uh, during the anti-government uh, so-called demonstrations in Maidan Square, together with those uh, uh, people who gathered in Maidan Square and uh, and uh, opposed uh, and uh, uh, con was were conducting uh, the these opposition movements uh, against uh, that time Ukrainian government, there were such persons as. Uh, foreign ministers of many European Union member states. There was uh, the Assistant Secretary of the United States of America. Uh, that was the state-based interference in the domestic uh, affairs of Ukraine, the interference that was the main reason of the tragedy your people is suffering now. Thank you. Ambassador, I... <coughs> I believe you owe us a few minutes more because you, we started late. Yes, yes, so yes. Can yes. We... I'm, I'm fully at your disposal. Oh, okay, okay. Because we have still have some yeah, I was questions. Late and, and it's my duty. Yeah. Uh, thank you. So, <clears throat> uh, the gentleman there, <clears throat> and then uh, we have a couple of questions online, and then we'll go back to them. Uh, <clears throat> good afternoon, Mr. Ambassador. I'm Akira Nemoto from Asahi Simbun. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, as you just mentioned that uh, today the Japanese government announced the death of a Japanese guy who fought in Ukraine, mm -hmm. for Ukraine. And uh, do you have any comment on that? And in your view, uh, is, he, uh, he, is he a mercenary or like a volunteer fighter? And secondary question is, uh, 
you had, uh, since the start of what you call the special military operations, mm -hmm. uh, you have continued to make statements with, in line with Russian government's position. And uh, no, uh, you have continued to uh, make statements mm -hmm. in line with Jap Russian government's mm -hmm. position. Mm -hmm. And you are now leaving Japan. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, are you sure that you have no regret on what you have said and what you have done during this time? And that's mm -hmm. it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much. Well, uh, first of all, I. I uh, uh, to, to speaking frankly, I have just seen only uh, yesterday. I've seen uh, I, uh, yesterday. I saw the the, the uh, made information that a Japanese national died in Ukraine, and yesterday also I heard uh, that the Japanese government uh, again confirmed that is that it uh, advises uh, to the Japanese nationals uh, not to visit Ukraine. Uh, by any reason. That is what I've heard. Now you said that the Japanese government confirmed the death uh, of uh, that uh, person uh, in question. Well, uh, again, uh, we uh, consider as an illegal activity the mercenary activity uh, in uh, Ukraine. Uh, so uh, I can only uh, say that uh, uh, it is better for the foreign nationals not to become mercenaries, mercenaries in Ukraine, because if they are mercenaries in Ukraine, uh, they naturally uh, become a legal target for our military. Uh, that is uh, uh, about the first part of your question. Uh, about the second part, uh, well, uh, for sure, I, I, uh, my, my, my main task uh, during uh, my mission in Tokyo was uh, to, uh, to uh, contribute to friendly, good neighborly, and uh, constructive and mutually beneficial relations development uh, between uh, our countries. And uh, 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 there is nothing to regret about this. Uh, it was it was uh, my job, and uh, I tried to do my job as um, as effective as uh, I could, as effective as it was in my uh, <coughs> ability. And uh, uh, but uh, uh, tango needs two to dance it, and. Uh, and that, that is why after uh, we started our special military operation and uh, after the Western countries uh, started this break dance alone, um, alone instead of tango for two. Well, uh, of course, uh, it, it is rather difficult to uh, develop relations with Japan, unfortunately. That, uh, if, if I regret about anything, uh, uh, it is uh, the position of our uh, counterparts who <laughs> now are uh, not in the mood to uh, to develop relations with us. Thank you. Uh, let's go online a little bit for a couple of questions, but very quick. Uh, one, uh, yes or no? Uh, did you from uh, uh, Karin Nishimura of uh, f from France? Uh, um, did you attend the funeral of uh, Abe Shinzo, mm -hmm. the private one, on July second, twelfth, uh, or? Uh, yes or no? Because yes. Yes. I was okay. in the Zojoji Shrine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. And the uh, other from uh, online is from uh, uh, Turkish uh, BBC World, Ilgin Yurulmaz. She's asking a few questions, but let's start with this one, which I found uh, very provocative for you. Uh, President Putin has a special relationship. This is BBC Tur Turkey. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, President Putin has a special relationship with Turkey, which is a NATO member and does not apply sanction against Russia. Uh, you know, President Erdogan is very active in this mm -hmm. period. But President Erdogan, Erdogan, a son-in-law, heads the company manufacturing and selling to Ukraine 
the famous Bayraktar drones that gave so much damage to the Russian military operations. Mm -hmm. How do you explain this uh, apparent uh, contradiction? Uh, well, uh, first of all, it's not for a Russian ambassador to Japan uh, to explain a contradiction with regard to the policy of Turkey. Uh, it's not for me to uh, actually. It's 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 it the very first time I hear uh, this uh, news, and I only can uh, say that uh, apart from private business activity, uh, relations between Russia and Turkey are very constructive. Uh, relations uh, between Russia and Turkey uh, are friendly, good neighborly. And uh, uh, I would like to quote my president who once, who said recently that maybe it is difficult to reach an agreement with President Erdogan, uh, but uh, if once we reached this agreement, if yeah. once we concluded any agreement, uh, there is no doubt that Mr. Erdogan uh, will follow it. Uh, so that is, uh, these words of my president uh, are the, 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 the uh, main sign for me uh, about how we are uh, doing things with Turkey. Thank you. Um, you and then you. Will Fee from the Japan Times. Um, I, I just wanted to say first that based on my own experience of being in Ukraine, that Ukrainians are not, were not generally anti-Russian, as you said, until Russia's original invasion of their territory in 2014. And a lot of them have simply made a decision to move away from the Russian sphere of inf influence and less towards the US than towards Europe, which should be their sovereign right as a free and independent nation. Um, for, for, as a, for a question, um, you spoke earlier about Japan's unfriendly attitudes towards Russia worsening the bilateral relationship. Since Russia's invasion, most people-to-people -people exchanges have ceased. But in places like Hokkaido, where many cities and towns have sister, sister city relations, there's also a strong economic aspect to relations with Russia. Uh, so just to confer, fer, confirm from your earlier comments, is there no motivation from your government side to relax the suspension of certain types of exchanges? Thank you. Uh, the suspension of certain types of exchanges. Oh, you mean this? The cultural exchange. No, no, no. So? I think no? you mean this uh, exchanges between the South Kuril Islands and Japan. That's what you mean? Yeah, any kind of exchanges. Uh, any kind of. Yep. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, uh, your first question, your fir the first part of your question. Unfortunately, uh, Pio, it, 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 uh, uh, these questions are not supposed to be answered in a way of yes or no, first of all. Uh, I'm so, not complaining as far okay, as you spend you so the night with us. I've never said that <laughs> generally Ukrainians are anti-Russian. I said that it was the United States and NATO that made Ukraine, uh, that turned Ukraine into an anti-Russia state. It's not about uh, the Ukrainians in general. It's about Ukrainian state which is definitely anti-Russian. Uh, then, um, uh, about the uh, Russian-Japanese relations. Uh, again, uh, it is not Russia uh, that uh, suspended, as you say, uh, the, the, this or that exchange uh, with uh, Japan. Unfortunately, the, the initiative to cut ties in many areas uh, came not came from our counterparts, uh, and in some cases we had to respond, and we responded. Uh, that is why, uh, as I uh, as I mentioned uh, above, uh, we are open for pragmatic and mutually beneficial cooperation with Japan, actually, uh, in many areas, uh, and we. Uh, we have proven it. For instance, uh, we uh, continue uh, our cooperation in energy area uh, on the basis of new conditions we set for foreign investors. Uh, we uh, continue our cultural exchange. For instance, uh, we uh, launched the uh, Russian cultural festival in Japan this year also. 
then uh, we respond positively to the humanitarian uh, issues uh, which from time to time may occur uh, between uh, the two countries which are close uh, neighbors. For instance, uh, you know, you heard uh, definitely uh, about uh, the tragedy, the tragic, uh, tragic maritime accident in April uh, in the waters of Hokkaido, in Japanese waters of Hokkaido, when a cruising ship uh, sank and uh, 26 people died, unfortunately. I. Uh, express my deep condolences <laughs> to the victims, to the relatives of the victims, and three, three persons, well, three bodies, uh, were taken to Russian shore by the sea waves, by by, by sea current, and uh, we we, after certain process of identification of the bodies, we of course delivered them back to. Uh, Japan and uh, we we are uh, of course ready to cooperate with uh, our Japanese uh, neighbors uh, in such uh, matters in such uh, areas as a uh, as a neighbor. So uh, it's not uh, for Russia to now to speak uh, what should be or not or should be not suspended. Uh, I think our counterparts uh, should uh, make a decision whether they uh, whether they keep uh, our relations in uh, their current situation, uh, which does not respond to the interests of uh, Japanese and Russian people, in my opinion, or they want to improve it. If they want, so we will be will receive their initiatives and consider them. Thank you. Yes. My name is Yusuke Chino with Fuji TV Japanese News. I, uh, it's a little bit different question. Mm -hmm. And Russian diplomatic blue plate holders committed so many parking violations and ignored paying their fines by dip diplomatic immunity in Japan. Mm -hmm. Russia is by far the worst. Mm -hmm. Do you think, uh, what do you think about it? And don't Russian diplomats have much intention to comply with the law? You are very, very late. You are late <laughs> about two or three years. Because uh, this uh, very situation uh, might took place several years ago. But taking into account the, the, the how should I say, uh, demands of the Japanese side, we improved the situation greatly. Yes, yes. Please. Do you want to, do you want me to answer or do you want to uh, discuss? Please let them answer. Uh, and uh, we improved the situation greatly, and uh, we were very strict uh, to uh, those who might violate uh, some uh, Japanese uh, regulations. Please ask uh, the foreign minister of Japan and they will show you new information. And uh, this is uh, one point. Second point is that something tells me that uh, it was not only the Russian embassy uh, <laughs> that <laughs> might, uh, might make some mistakes. Uh, but I've, on the other hand, I've never heard any public, any questions in public about other embassies, <laughs> in, including the embassies of uh, the uh, Japanese, uh, of the countries that are very, very close uh, to uh, Japan. So uh, if necessary, we, uh, we take uh, measures uh, to uh, uh, to uh, respect the rules and laws of uh, the state where we are accredited in accordance to the with the Wien uh, Convention on Diplomatic Relations. Thank you. Okay, the lady there. I think this is the last question. Uh, hello, I'm Chicago Hukabar from NTB. 
what do you think of <coughs> at least 300,000 young Russians leaving country since special op operation has started? <coughs> Oh, okay. Well, uh, uh, there is uh, a free uh, <laughs> flow, a free uh, uh, freedom of leaving uh, the country or freedom to enter the country in Russia. No problem about that. And uh, uh, so those persons who left uh, Russia, they, had, they, they used their right for free movement. Uh, this is my first point. Uh, and the second point uh, is uh, that if you, if, if you mean, uh, uh, if you mean uh, uh, how it uh, can be connected or not connected with the partial mo mobilization in uh, Russia, so uh, uh, we should not judge uh, on all of them in one package. There should be individual approach about why uh, this or that person left Russia. That is uh, what I can tell you now. Thank you. All right, Ambassador. Um, I understand you have been uh, uh, saying hello mm -hmm. to many Japanese politicians, mm -hmm. personally, mm -hmm. <coughs> including uh, Mr. Hatoyama and uh, he's a uh, former prime minister. Mm. And he tweeted a uh, very nice tweet about your encounter. Mm. Uh, you. Could you tell us what was the most, uh, I would say, affectionate sayonara from a Japanese politician? Uh, well, <laughs> you're right that now I mainly uh, say not hello, but sayonara, uh, <laughs> because now yes. is time to, li uh, to leave Japan. Uh, uh, to, to, to complete my mission and uh, to leave Japan. Well, uh, Mr. Yukio Hatoyama, my good and old friend uh, and uh, great Japanese statesman and politician, uh, has uh, made a great contribution to the uh, development of Russian Japanese uh, relations and not uh, and it, it, it may be it may be uh, said about it may be said about uh, the whole Hatoyama family yes. because you know that his uh, grandfather Prime Minister Ichiro Hatoyama uh, back in 1956 visited the Soviet Union and uh, signed the joint declaration uh, of uh, Soviet Union of the Soviet Union and Japan uh, seizing the state of war and uh, restoring <coughs> friendly uh, relations, restoring diplomatic relations uh, between our two countries. <coughs> uh, Mr. Ichiro Hatoyama, the son of Mr. Ichiro Hatoyama, was once the foreign minister of Japan, and uh, in this position he uh, took care also of uh, the Soviet-Japanese -Jap relations. Uh, then Mr. Kunio Hatoyama, the younger brother of Mr. Yukio Hatoyama, uh, LD people, the LDP, late LDP politician, he passed away unfortunately. <coughs> uh, also, uh, once was uh, there was a period when he uh, was the chair of uh, the organizing committee of the Russian Cultural Festival in uh, Japan, and of course, Mr. Yukio Hatoyama, ah. uh, my good friend, uh, and uh, he 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 uh, is very very. Positive. He is very, very friendly to Russia. He is very, very objective in uh, uh, even now. He is even now. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, objective, responsible, and fair uh, in in uh, his assessments uh, of uh, what is going on. So I <laughs> value very highly Mr. Kat uh, Yukio Hatoyama's contribution, and I value very highly our friendship, and I'm very thankful to him for our friendship. Are you going to throw a Sayonara party at your embassy for you? And if yes, who are you going to invite from the Japanese government side? Well, uh, <laughs> well, well, well. Well, your predecessor well. did throw very, very good parties. Yes, my distinguished predecessor, Honorable Ambassador Fanasiev, uh, hosted his farewell party in a slightly different situation, you know. Uh, so uh, I, I, I want to act in, in his manner, in the, I want to act in the manner he acted that time, 
but uh, it, 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 it is not, <coughs> it, uh, sometimes it is not possible. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, oh. <laughs> nice to meet you, Mr. Riker. Nice to meet you. I, I'm sure you are aware you're on my time. Yeah. In 15 minutes, the Tokyo Sinfonia will be on this stage for our rehearsal. And I just wanted to oh, say thank you. for an old friend, uh -huh. Ambassador Gorazin, represents something that I I'm sorry. Yes. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Oh, cool. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Riker. Thank you. Wish you all the best. Ambassador, you are already a member of the club, and we don't think that extending another year would be any work for you. So this is a token of our uh, t-shirt. I don't know if it's your size.